Alex Newman. Alex has written for a wide array of publications in the United States and abroad. He currently serves as a contributor to Epoch Times and foreign correspondent and senior editor for the New American Magazine. Alex is the author of several books and has been a guest on countless radio and television programs and is a much sought after conference speaker. Alex is best known for his reporting and research that has exposed the dangers and agenda of globalism. As the father of five children, Alex is working to defend faith, family, and freedoms from the hostile philosophies and ideas that are contrary to the Bible and the United States Constitution. And now, here is your host, Alex Newman. Tuning in today on this beautiful day that the Lord has made. Uh, we've got some news for you and also uh, a very special guest, Senator Doug Mastriano, who's running for governor in Pennsylvania, will be joining us shortly. So you won't want to miss that. Uh, first, our daily Bible verse, folks, and uh, you'll see why I'm using this one today uh, in a moment. But uh, this comes out of Mark chapter 12, verse 31. These are the words of our Lord. He says, the second greatest command is this, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. Okay, uh, that's a very, very well known, right? He summarizes all of the law into two commands. The first he gives in verse 30, love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind and with all your strength. And then the second command is love your neighbor as yourself. And so when we think of that, uh, you know, we, we normally think of, well, how do we love our neighbor? Well, we protect our neighbor. We support our neighbor. We help our neighbor. Uh, if our neighbor is being executed unfairly, then we intervene. Uh, if our neighbor is an unborn baby, then we speak out. And yet this Bible verse was abused by the governor of California in a manner so disgusting it will make you want to throw up. So we'll share that uh, in our news segment later on in the program today. Uh, it truly is incredible. But uh, folks, we're going to skip uh, our normal news segment in the beginning, and we're just going to go straight to our guest. Uh, he's coming to us from Pennsylvania. Uh, I'm sure you have heard of him. Probably good things, unless you've been watching the fake media. Uh, his name is Senator <laughs> Doug Mastriano. He's a state senator in Pennsylvania. He's a husband, a father, an Army combat veteran, the son of a career U.S. Navy man. Uh, and so after proving his statesmanship for some years in the Pennsylvania State Senate, now he's running for governor of the great state of Pennsylvania against a radical left-wing Democrat. And uh, the media is really out to get him. Uh, before we bring him on, a little bit more about him. Uh, he retired as a colonel from the Army in 2017 after 30 years of active duty service. So he's literally dedicated his life to defending our freedom, defending our families, and serving the people of our nation. Uh, in 2019, he was overwhelmingly elected to serve as senator for Pennsylvania's 33rd district. And uh, while there, he has been a leader in reopening the state, pushing back against the unconstitutional mandates, and championing individual freedom. I think that is why the fake media is so terrified of this man. Uh, Senator Mastriano, thank you so much for joining us. Now, uh, the media is saying that uh, you are going to get creamed. And yet, looking at the polling data here, the <laughs> tropical per, the, the most accurate one from 2016, they have you within two points of victory, which is, of course, the margin of error. Uh, why do you think the media is touting all these fake polls that have historically been so wrong, trying to demoralize your supporters? Actually, the Democrat National Committee with the Democrat Legislative Campaign Committee, two national bodies that blacklisted 21 Republicans last year. And I uh, guess who made the top of their list? And uh, I thought it was bizarre, Alex, that I was getting hit with the same talking points from The Atlantic, from The New York Times, The Post, and you know, all the usual. And, and, and it was the same old, you know, too dangerous, too radical, all this. And I'm like thinking, how could I be too dangerous for America when? I defended this nation for 30 years, wore the uniform, no hero. The heroes didn't come home with us. Uh, and then also during my entire 30 year career, I had a top secret access. So, you know, access to some of the nation's most damaging and sensitive secrets. And really, I'm a danger to this, this republic. Uh, it didn't work. Uh, the Democrat National Committee did a poll last November. Hope and I hitting me so hard that, you know, since they said a lot of mean things, I, I just quit. And uh, didn't happen. Made me more popular in Pennsylvania. Thank God that the, the, uh, the people of the state are smarter than the Democrats, and they're like, we got to think of a different strategy. But what strategy do they have? My opponent is the attorney general, and all he can do is call names because he has a record as the attorney general for six years as an utter dismal failure. 
Yeah, and uh, and you know the last couple of years with the COVID stuff, uh, Pennsylvania was one of the states that was really hit hard by the mandates from your Democratic uh, administration and Attorney General, of course. And uh, you guys in the legislature valiantly resisted. Uh, one of the points that they are hitting you hardest on, and I, I find this really interesting. I keep seeing your opponent describe you as an extremist on the issue of abortion. And I think that's interesting because, you know, I, I started off the, the show with, uh, I, I do a daily Bible verse every time. And that Bible verse is actually a Bible verse that the governor of California, Governor Newsom, is now putting up on billboards all across the country promoting <clears throat> abortion, quoting the words of Jesus and using that to promote abortion. Uh as far as I'm concerned, that is extremism when it comes to the issue of abortion. But uh, what are your thoughts on this? Why do you think they're they're trying to use this against you? Do you really think the, the public is as pro-abortion as they want us to think? We know that Jesus loved children. And, you know, he gave a stark warning, I think, in Matthew about those that, that would harm children. I mean, it's, it's I'm, I'm sure that old Governor Newsom won't use that scripture there. <laughs> um, here's the deal, and uh, I'm going to answer it directly. So we were told by the media when the Dobbs decision came out in June that it would motivate the Democrat base. And, and, and that's broadcast with the unanimity across the left wing media. And it's even filtered over to our side as well. Um, I'm going to answer your question in a second. Let me get to a second. My point is, we had a March for Life rally three Mondays ago in Harrisburg. And, it, and Alex, it was packed. It was five or 6,000 people. It was amazing. One of the biggest rallies since the shutdown. And then the next day, Planned Parenthood, Planned Parenthood had their rally the next day. I was in session in the Senate. I was present at both of these because I was at work. Um, and they brought in people. They broadcasted you know, nationwide. They had national speakers fly in. And they had a whopping 65 people show up. I'm telling you the truth. That's all they had out there. And so I'm wondering if actually the motivation is on our side here, you know, after, you know, since 1973, finally, you know, some finally some headway after so many promises and so much fighting and, you know, and so, and so much argument and debate that, that we're at a, a crossroads here. Now, as far as Pennsylvania and the future of abortion under Governor Mastriano, the fact of the matter, I ask people, you might not want to read the entire Supreme Court decision on Dobbs. I, I would say, please do. It's a very good read, by the way. But in the 65 to page decision. Go to page one, the third paragraph. Uh, here's what's going to happen with abortion under Mastriano. It says the, the issue of, of abortion in life these be Dobbs is now in the hands of the people and the people's representatives. So the, pe the fact, constitutionally, the fact is the people of Pennsylvania will decide on exceptions, when, you know, how many weeks, and how long, you know, and any other parameters. The governor can't decide that. The governor is either a, a yes or a veto. As simple as that. Very good. And, uh, you know, I, I know uh, certainly a lot of conservatives are motivated by this issue. Uh, another thing that really has been motivating conservatives that I can see is uh, opposition to the overreach by the Biden administration. Uh, we've got a lot of our, our most popular Republican governors in the country are those who have done the most to stand up to the Biden administration. I'm down here in Florida. We've got uh, Governor Ron DeSantis, and he's become something of a superstar because of his efforts to stand up to the Biden administration and the overreach on issue after issue. Uh, what do you think the role of governors should be in uh, in trying to stand up against unconstitutional uh, attacks on freedom and constitutional liberties from the White House and from the federal government. It constitutionally, it's everything. Uh, we saw during the shutdown, you know, my governor is, is one of the most radical Democrat governors in the nation. Uh, he was rated as so by Forbes before the shutdown. And when the shutdown happened, our Governor Wolf came in hard and heavy. We're the only, you know, on top of all the other things that happened, sending sick back into homes, killing the elderly, you know, and, and denying 170 years of germ theory by Louis Pasteur, you know, and on and on and on. We're the only state to stop, you know, construction, you know, and, and stop car sales. I mean, everything was shut down under Tom Wolf. And so then we saw the awesome Governor DeSantis in Florida and an example of what a governor should be. He's become really the gold standard for governors standing in the gap for the people, upholding and defending their constitutional rights and freedoms. And so my goal is to, to make Pennsylvania the Florida of the North by protecting people's freedoms and liberties and standing in the gap against overreach and unconstitutional edicts. You know, I even have a bill in, sen in the Senate which uh, would pro prohibit our state law enforcement from enforcing unconstitutional enforcement that, that violate the Second Amendment in our state, you know, because not only shall it not be infringed constitutionally, but in Pennsylvania, our state constitution, the right for you to keep marijuana shall not be questioned. And so we, there's a lot a governor can do in that capacity. 
That's fantastic. And uh, I, I love those bills. You know, I, the, the liberals got so good at using state governments to, to defy federal policy that they disagreed with. And conservatives just kind of, oh, we can't do that. We can't do that. Oh, wait, all the liberals are doing it. And now they're finally starting to realize that uh, we do have options here. It's uh, very encouraging. Um, you know, shifting gears a little bit to uh, to energy and, and kind of the, the crisis that is hitting, as I would say, self-inflicted wound here. The Biden administration has been uh, trying to tie up as many leases as possible, make sure people can't get oil, can't get natural gas. Uh, we're going to do basically everything possible to sabotage our, our infrastructure under the guise of saving us from global warming. Uh, and yet you guys up in the north, uh, you've got the winter coming. You've got uh, energy prices through the roof. Uh, what does uh, Governor Mastriano do about something like that? Thank you for asking. God has blessed Pennsylvania not only as the birthplace of our nation, but we have natural resources underneath our feet. It's like a gold mine of liquefied natural gas. Of course, we have to you know refine it. Uh, coal and oil, high grade pure oil. I, I even pumped some of it out of Warren County. It was uh, that was a lot of fun, by the way. <laughs> it's like a kid's dream kind of thing. But uh, my goal on, as, as governor is uh, to make Pennsylvania number one in energy production. What's the so what? So domestically in Pennsylvania, that drives down energy costs. And instead of choosing between heating and eating, you'll actually be able to afford to live and have your houses heated. And it's probably going to be a cold winter, by the way. Um, it'll drive that inflation in our state here. It'll make it easier to live. It'll, it'll be a land of opportunity. You know, you know, Florida, with a great governor and with tourism, is doing fantastic. In Pennsylvania, imagine if we unleash our energy potential. So here's how I'm going to physically do this. I, I have a, a real plan, by the way. And it's actually uh, in my Senate bill called the Pennsylvania Independence Act. On day one, we're at this regional greenhouse gas initiative, which is a mini version of the Paris Climate Accords. It's, so it's a carbon tax. Uh, Governor Wolf signed us up for that without a vote of the General Assembly. On day one, executive order, when I'm sworn in on 17 January next year, we're out of that compact. That's going to bring down prices almost by half in the middle of winter, which is fantastic. Additionally, I'm opening up state lands for energy development. And yes, we can do it cleanly. We're, you know, we're going to drill and dig like never before, but I don't want cancer you know, cancer causing agents in air grab. We want trout in our stream, you know, hunters and fish. Fishing and, all, and, and camping. Uh, the energy sector has demonstrated to me we could do both by developing our energy, energy and also protecting the environment. Uh, number three is a, a couple pipelines, uh, LNG, liquefied natural gas pipelines to Philadelphia, and, and have that in Delaware River, which has access to the Atlantic Ocean, and become a net exporter of energy to other states. Alex, you remember this in 2018. We had a bad winter. It was terrible. Boston was running out of energy. And instead of buying LNG off of Pennsylvania, they, they brought in two ships from Putin's Russia 4,000 miles away. So, and, and they're complaining about Ukraine. It's like, dude, you Democrats enrich Vladimir Putin, that villain. And so Pennsylvania, if we have this LNG terminal in, you know, in the Delaware River and also in Lake Erie, we could be a net exporter to these states that have prohibited us from building pipelines. And so we'll get it to you. We'll, and we'll, we'll take European money. Germany, you can, you can buy our LNG. We want money coming into Pennsylvania. I mean, and this is just a, a quick glimpse, you know, into the future we have in Pennsylvania. And this will help our nation walk out of this, this uh recession. I, I know they keep on changing the name of it because it's overwhelmingly a news speak. We really are in a recession and this will help the nation fight its way out of it by helping us become energy independent once again. Yeah. And it's amazing how quick it can happen. You know, nobody believed that it would be possible under Donald Trump that within just a few years we went, uh, we became for the first time since Eisenhower, a net exporter of energy. I mean, it just, it happened on a dime. When you have good leadership, yeah. good things happen. Uh, Senator Mastriano, uh, one of the big issues that has been on everybody's mind, liberals, Democrats, conservatives, Republicans, is education. Uh, it, it was a big winner for the Republicans in Virginia. People are apparently upset about their children being taught that they could pick any gender they want. Uh, that they can go uh, get hormone treatments and things like this. Uh, I know this is happening in, in your state, in Pennsylvania. Uh, what what are you planning to do about what's happening in the public schools if and when you get elected? It's so bad that, that the respected and highly loved and regarded community hospital, Philadelphia, no, sorry, Children's Hospital, Philadelphia, very well respected. If your child was sick, that's the place to get into. Uh, but now uh, we have them on record by the, their own leaders talking about how they're, they're getting kids out of foster care and kids off the streets. It's, you know, those confused because obviously they've been abused and then experiment with them. I'm calling it experimenting because that's what it is with the gender transition. And so uh, this kind of horror ends. So on day one of my administration, pronoun games are over in school. On day one, CRT or what, teaching to hate your country and each other based off skin color, that ends on day one. Uh, my opponent fought really hard for the right for boys to go into the girls' bathroom, and uh, he won. 
sadly, that's a safety issue. I, you know, I stand with 800,000 girls that go to school here and have to, you know, wonder if they're safe in the bathroom. It, and my opponent wasn't content enough to impose his will, his radical ideas on Pennsylvania. He also did an amicus this time last year against the people of Virginia, which he won. This time last year, that young lady was raped in Loudoun County. This time last year, the dad found out it was a cover-up, and then he's hauled out in handcuffs. I mean, so on day one, there's no more boys in the girls' bathroom. On day one, there's no more boys on the girls' team. I mean, that, I, Alex, that I have to say this, that shows you how low we've gotten. Yep, you're exactly right. And, you know, the New York Times actually just commissioned a poll recently, and it showed what any normal person with common sense would have been able to tell you already. People don't want their little children being taught that they could pick new genders, that they can go into different bathrooms. Even liberals don't want that. This is not a, a winning yeah. issue for the Democrats, and yet they keep pushing it. Um, and, and that brings me to, you know, the last major thing I want to ask you about, Senator. Um, yeah, I've talked to some of your colleagues in the Pennsylvania State Senate. I've talked to a lot of people in Pennsylvania about this issue. In fact, I talked to an election judge uh, from Lancaster County just uh, about a month ago in Missouri, and he he told me that he had been really concerned by what he saw. The whole country looked at Pennsylvania and was very alarmed in 2020. Um, are you confident in the integrity of the vote? What kind of measures uh, that you might be able to describe are you guys taking? And what kind of reforms do you have in mind uh, for the future once you get elected? Yeah, so, you know, obviously after the 2020 election on the 3rd of November back a few years ago, you know, I held that hearing in Gettysburg right before Thanksgiving, and it kind of blew the lid off of the problems we have in Pennsylvania. Uh, Governor Wolf has managed to veto any major reforms that we had planned on, so we have a lot, a long ways to go, but the elections are not as unsecure as they were in 2020. For instance, we managed to successfully uh, end Zuck Bucks, you know, outside money coming in to help Democrats get out the vote. So that's now done. It's banned in Pennsylvania. Uh, there's no three extra days to get your ballots in and all these other you know shifty things that happened in 2020. Well, how we win this, and, and look, we, the people of Virginia were at a similar crossroads last year, and and Yonkin still won. And this time last year, he was double digits behind, you know, and Terry McAuliffe and Clinton's pick for Democrat governor of Virginia. Uh, there was no way that that guy could be beat. Well, the people of Virginia, first, they did their part. They came out in huge numbers, and they won the seat. Number two is the Yonkin campaign and Republicans. They, they had uh, poll watchers at 95% of the polls, I'm told. So we're trying to recruit 20,000 poll watchers. We have about 10,000 polls. We want two at each. So uh, to increase transparency and accountability at each polling station. So we could do our bit. Alex, the last thought is, so, you know, Governor Wolf shut us down in Pennsylvania. For it, so bad, he shut down all the cabinet shops in the state except one in York County named Wolf Industries. Yes, it's a family <laughs> business. You can't make this crap up. These guys are just, they're so shameless about how awful they are. Um, but then at the same time here, so we passed all these measures. Governor Wolf vetoed it. He loved his emergency powers. So then we did a referendum. And the people of Pennsylvania came out last year in overwhelming numbers. And, and they first state in the nation to seize the governor's powers to eliminate the possibility of this happening again. So we could do it. And that's in the midst of a, you know, of, of a system that has a lot of issues with it. Uh, for, as far as my administration, obviously top on my list is a voter ID. And there's a whole litany of things we're going to do, you know, poll watch protection and just on and on and on. That's fantastic. Uh, very glad to hear it. Uh, Senator, before we let you go, uh, what's the campaign website? How can people support you? Um, can people outside of Pennsylvania donate to your campaign? And what's the best way to find you on the Internet? Yeah, if you're an American, you can give to our campaign, and people from all 50 states have given because they see the significance historically, culturally, and politically of this victory in Pennsylvania. I do believe without hyperbole that we get it right on 8 November Pennsylvania, we can change the course and trajectory of American history because we have a special place. We are the Keystone State. This is where our nation was founded. The ideals of our government came out of William Penn's uh, concept of, of how to form a government um, with all the basic ideas of freedom and what have you, because he went to jail for his faith in, in England. You know, he had the wrong political ideas. He belonged to the wrong uh, you know, denomination as a Quaker. And he talked about Jesus too much, and so they threw him in jail. And he founded Pennsylvania as a place where men and women can come from around Europe then, now from around the world, to walk as free men and women. So go to DougForGov.com and help us out, and we'll win. DougForGov.com. Well, Senator Mastriano, thank you so much for, for your service to our country and the military. Thank you now for uh, what you're doing for the folks of Pennsylvania. We're all watching your race, and we're all praying for you. Thank you very much, and uh, hopefully we'll get you back on uh, once you are elected. I look forward to it. Thanks for having me on. God bless you.
Thank you, sir. God bless you as well. All right, folks. Senator Doug Mastriano. Go check out his website, DougForGov.com. If you're in Pennsylvania, man, get involved. This is a critical race. The distinction could not be more clear. If you're outside of Pennsylvania, consider getting involved too, folks. This is, a, like he said, it's a critical race with national implications. Good things happen in Pennsylvania. Good things can happen in other places as well. Uh, the radical left have their eyes on Pennsylvania. It is a Republican state. If you look at their legislature, it is a Republican legislature. Um, but uh, this is going to be a, a, a tough battle, folks. They're playing dirty. Uh, his opponent has all kinds of money from special interests from all over the country, millions and millions of dollars. So uh, if you want to help him even it out, you know how to find him, DougForGov.com. Senator Doug Mastriano. All right, folks, we're going to go to break. When we get back, we'll share some news updates with you. So stay right here. Are you concerned about your child's education? Are you considering removing your children from the failing public schools? Greater Than I Ministries can help by giving you 15% off our Thinking Like a Christian Biblical Worldview video series and a free home educator's kit as a bonus for your purchase. This powerful video series will thoroughly equip you and your family with the truth that you need to fight the battle of ideas warring against our families. And our free Home Educators Kit will instantly connect you with the resources you need to take control of your child's education. Just go to gtimin.com and click the Buy Now button at the top. Choose the DVD or the streaming version. Then enter the promo code NEWMAN at the checkout for your 15% discount. That's gtimin.com. Click the Buy Now button at the top, choose the format you wish, and enter the promo code NEWMAN at the checkout to receive our free Home Educators Kit and 15% off our Thinking Like a Christian Worldview video series. You'll be glad you did. Hello, everyone. I hope you're enjoying the Sentinel Report with Alex Newman. Uh, we're so happy to have him over here at Lindell TV, and I hope you're enjoying his show. Great content. You know what? You can all support him and Lindell TV by getting the best special ever right now. We have on sale, using that promo code Newman, we have our slippers. They're normally $139.98, as big a savings you'll ever have. You save $90. They're only $49.98. These have a 60-day money-back guarantee. If you don't like them, I guarantee, though, they're going to be the most comfortable slippers you'll ever own. They have a patented impact gel and other technology that took over a year to develop. You guys, these are the best. You can wear them like shoes. They look great. Um, everywhere I go in the country, this is what they're talking about me, about my slippers. They're going, how did you come up with them? It's amazing. They're great. And it really is true. They are great. And uh, so use that promo code Newman here, and uh, you're going to save $90. You get them for $49.98. Also, right here, if you order today using that promo code, you're going to get a, a free copy of my book. Oh, there it is. The buy one, get one free is still available here at frankspeech.com. Look at that. You get a buy one pill, get another one absolutely free. A set of sheets. I didn't see that. A set of sheets. You get any set of sheets and you get another one of equal or greater of equal value. Absolutely free. Um, you got uh, you have the uh, the pillows. Buy one, get another one. Absolutely free. The roll and go anywhere pillows that flags with God, all things are possible. You guys, we have over 50 selections there. You got to get in and check those out. I use those more than I use my cell phone. And there's the towels. Buy one six pack set, get another one absolutely free. Once again, thank you for all your support here at Lindell TV. Thanks for watching the Sentinel Report. And thank you and God bless. All righty, folks, welcome back to the Sentinel Report. Appreciate you tuning in. Uh, also, folks, I mentioned it before, and I'll mention it again. The Red Pill Expo is coming up soon in Salt Lake City. So if you're within driving distance, I would love to see you there. We're going to have some awesome people there. That'll be from November 12th and 13th. It's going to be right in Salt Lake City in Utah. It's going to be absolutely amazing. And if you use the promo code Newman, you can get a 10% discount on everything. So if you're not within driving distance, you can even get the live stream. But if you use that promo code Newman, you get a big discount. Uh, I'm on the board of directors there. I've, I've spoken at every single meeting. I'll be giving a talk on the myriad crises that are all headed in our direction that are going to be used to take down our society. There you see some of our incredible speakers. We'll have uh, Del Bigtree. 
will be there. Uh, Del Big Tree, of course, uh, has done uh, heroic work exposing the vaccine dangers. We've got Dr. Kerry Madej. We've got, of course, the great G. Edward Griffin, the one and only, the man, the legend. So come check it out. Go to redpillexpo.org and use the promo code Newman. You get a big discount on tickets and uh, VIP and uh, live stream, whatever it is you want to do. So hopefully we will see you there. All right, folks. Um, I want to talk a little bit about some of the news in the few minutes that we have left. Um, b- concerned about free speech, you've now got 12 federal judges who say they are not going to be taking clerks from Yale Law School anymore. Uh, really incredible. Uh, they said that basically Yale has become so hostile to free speech that uh, these uh, federal judges will not be hiring law clerks from Yale University anymore. A uh, prominent circuit judge who was quoted by the uh, Washington Free Beacon says, uh, students should be mindful that they will be face diminished opportunities if they go to Yale. I have no confidence that they're being taught anything. And uh, folks, it's true. Yale Law School has become a bastion of radical left-wing fanaticism to the point where even normal liberals are chased out of there. It's uh, it's truly amazing. Um uh, speaking of craziness in academia, uh, Jonathan Haidt, uh, who's been uh, concerned about the politicization of academia for a very long time, has now finally been pushed out of his own primary professional association because he refuses to sign a requirement showing how his submission uh, to a uh, professional association advances equity, inclusion, and anti-racism goals. He says this is political. We're not going to participate. And so he is now leaving the Society for Personality and Social psychology. Uh, Governor Newsom, folks, I mentioned this earlier when we had uh, Senator Mastriano on here. Uh, He is buying billboards all over the country, literally promoting the murder of unborn babies, promoting butchering unborn babies. uh, And he's doing it by using the words of Jesus, folks. Uh, uh, Reagan, if you could throw that up on the screen, uh, the the picture of this abominable uh, billboard. It is just horrific. Um, Do you have it, Reagan? All right. Well, there it is. So I need an abortion. California is ready to help. Yeah. Abortion.ca.gov. Folks, this is so horrific. And to abuse the words of our Lord to promote the murder of unborn babies, Uh, as uh, Pastor John MacArthur put it in a letter to uh, the governor, it would be hard to imagine a greater sacrilege. He also quoted uh, Psalm chapter 50, verses 16 and through 19 that warn about those who uh, give a real clear warning for those who pervert the word of God for evil ends. And uh, boy, did Governor Newsom really step in it. So, uh, folks, I hope you'll join us all in praying for Governor Newsom to turn from this evil, to repent of this incredible wickedness. And uh, for the people of California, too, uh, I mean, God's judgment cannot be far in this kind of environment. Uh, Truly terrifying, the things that are happening, folks. But uh, one more piece of good news. Uh, Oklahoma Governor Kevin Stitt has just signed a bill, SB3, that will prevent the gender transition of minors at Oklahoma Children's Hospital at Oklahoma University Health. Uh, He says this is just a first step. I'm calling on the legislature to ban all irreversible gender transition surgeries and hormone therapies on minors statewide. Uh, We support that here, Governor Stitt. I actually just got back from Oklahoma, and, um, you know, they've got some real great people in Oklahoma in their legislature and uh, even the governor himself. Uh, They're doing a lot of good work there. Uh, There's still plenty more to be done, but this is a good first step, folks. It is so unacceptable that uh, taxpayer-funded institutions are mutilating the genitals of children. And yet, this is what we've come to, folks. Uh, We have governors, uh, the governor of our biggest state, using the words of Jesus to promote butchering unborn babies. We've got tax-funded institutions chopping off breasts and genitals from children under the guise of doing a gender transition. Folks, this is not about a difference of opinion. Uh, What we're dealing with here is evil. It's demonic. It must be resisted by all people of goodwill. And that begins with us right here. So I want to thank you for tuning in. It's always a pleasure to share this 30 minutes with you. God willing, we shall be back again tomorrow with more. So stay tuned. If you're watching us live, Roger Stone will be coming up next with the Stone Zone. Also, if you want to get some uh, long-term storable foods to prepare for the craziness that is coming toward us like a barreling freight train, go to preparewithsentinel.com. 
You get big discounts at preparewithsentinel.com. You get uh, a 20% discount on a three-month food supply, also a $50 discount on a one-month food supply, only at preparewithsentinel.com. Well, I'm Alex Newman. This is the Sentinel Report here on Lindell TV or whatever platform you're watching us on. Thanks for tuning in. Until next time, God bless you all. Hello, I'm Mike Lindell, and for the first time ever, you can get my three-piece towel sets for the lowest price ever.